Thank you for joining. In this lesson, we will install and implement the AutoMapper package. Here are a few words about AutoMapper. It's an open source library that automates object to object mapping in net applications. By default, it uses conventions to match source and destination properties. But it can also be configured for custom mappings using a Fluent API. AutoMapper handles null values, provides value resolvers for custom mapping logic supports mapping collections, offers built-in validation features, and includes several other functionalities that simplify the process of mapping data between objects in net applications. Most importantly, it significantly reduces the amount of hard-coded mapping code that we need to write. So AutoMapper is quite convenient, and we will see why it's convenient shortly. Now let's proceed with the installation. You can access NuGet either through tools, then NuGet Package Manager and Manage NuGet Packages, or take the shortcut by clicking on Dependencies and selecting Manage NuGet Packages from here. In the search field, type AutoMapper. You will need to install two items. The first one is AutoMapper for object to object mapping, and the second package is the AutoMapper extension with dependency injection. Both of these packages are already installed on my computer, so I will skip the installation process, which is quite straightforward. Before we begin, I'll create a copy of the controller class. I'll keep this copy as an option for you in case you prefer to have the mapping between objects, such as a DTO and the context, to be hard-coded. However, if you prefer the more convenient approach of auto-mapping, you can use the controller file that we are about to modify with AutoMapper. To convert an object to another object, as you can see, we were using the hard-coded method of mapping the DTO to the model or the model to the DTO. However, AutoMapper can automate this process, significantly reducing the amount of code required. While we currently have only a few properties, imagine if we had 50 of them. Hard-coding of all these properties would make the codebase grow significantly and become unreadable. To implement the AutoMapper, we need three simple steps. The first step, we need to create a profile class that includes AutoMapper configuration. This class defines how objects should be mapped between source and destination types. The second step is to register AutoMapper with the dependency injection container in ProgramCS class and pass the profile we created in the first step. And the final step in our controllers or services where we need to perform mapping, inject the iMapper instance into the constructor. This allows you to use AutoMapper for object-to-object -object mapping. Let's begin by implementing the first step, which is creating a profile class. To do that, we will need to create a folder, and I'll name it Mapping Profiles. Inside this folder, we can organize all our mapping profile classes. The class we will create is named Solar Systems Profile, and it needs to inherit from the profile class. The profile class is provided by AutoMapper and serves as the base class and container for defining our mapping configurations. By inheriting from it, we establish a dedicated container for specifying how objects should be mapped. This approach keeps our mapping configuration logic separate from our domain models, DDOs, controllers, and other parts of our application. It provides organization, maintainability, and the clear responsibility of holding mapping configurations without mixing them with other concerns. Next, we need to create a constructor. Inside this constructor, we configure the mapping by specifying the mapping rules. These rules determine how AutoMapper should map properties from the source to destination, and vice versa. The profile class is typically instantiated and configured during the application's startup process, and it's registered with the AutoMapper. Once the profile is registered, we can use the AutoMapper instance for performing mapping throughout our application, including in controller actions, services, and other parts of our code where object-to-object -object mapping is required. To define a mapping between two types, we use the create method. This method specifies how properties from one type should be mapped to properties in another type. It's typically called within the constructor of an AutoMapper profile. The mapping configuration consists of two parts, the source and the destination. In the getAll method, we are mapping the model to the DTO, with the model as the source and the DTO as the destination. 
Returning to the profile class, we need to specify the source object parameter, our model as solar system, and the second object, the destination as solar system DTO. With that, the first part is complete. Now we need to register it with the dependency injection container to make it available within the application. To do this, we register it as a service within the dependency container using the builder instance and the add automapper method. Then we pass the solar system profile class, which we just created, into the add automapper method. This completes the second part. Now let's move on to the final part, which is the controller. First, we need to inject the dependency into the controller's constructor using iMapper. It's an interface provided by AutoMapper. As usual, we add a field to store the injected instance. In the getAll method, we utilize the mapper field to invoke the map method. We pass the destination, which is solar system DTO, and the source, which is solar systems. This instructs AutoMapper to map the data from our repository source class to the destination DTO class in accordance with the profile class we created earlier and the defined mapping rule. In the controller, instead of the hard-coded mapping code, which we can now delete, we use a single line of code. As a result, this action method becomes clean and readable, and it's evident that this parameter defines the destination, while this one represents the source. The getAllAction method is now functional and can be tested in Swagger. However, we encounter an issue when we need to perform the opposite conversion. In such cases, we would have to duplicate the mapping rule in the mapping profile class. To address this, we can add an additional mapping rule to convert it in the opposite direction. However, in my opinion, this approach is inconvenient. Fortunately, AutoMapper provides the reverse map method, which simplifies this matter and the code. I will explain how to implement the reverse map method in the next lesson, along with completing the amendments to all other action methods using AutoMapper. Additionally, I will cover how to map properties when their names do not match, using additional methods such as forMembers and mapFrom. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!